Hi everyone, this is Handy from No Dice on Road and today here we will have uh, Lost Learn uh, games and we will talk about their latest product. No world unexplored, no tome unread, no dice unrolled. Uh, in particular, I want to say thank you to uh, Mark Reinhagen, Jenna Schmidt, Alicia Lee and Charlie Ladd. Thank you for being here. Our uh, first question is about uh, your new world. Uh, you entertained us with uh, so many uh, different and uh, amazing words. Now uh, we talk about Lost Learn. Um, you presented it in a very particular way. It is a, a dark fantasy uh, product uh, full of mysteries, intrigues and uh, I think a lot of politics. Uh, so, um, is it uh, an intimate or like many other works uh, that you produced in the past? Uh, I mean um, something like in which uh, player can uh, play all those little roles in a, in a huge world around them? Well, I, I guess I can talk about Lost Learn a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, and Alicia maybe can help me out here. Uh, that it's it's kind of more set into in like a almost like a mid medieval musketeer like um, feel. I feel like it's a hybrid between the Five E and the um, storytelling system uh, from the World of Darkness. So it's 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 a great hybrid game that's going to bring more of a role play element. Um, to kind of some classic D&D feel with more, a little more horror, a little more adventure, swashy intrigue, and it's, it's quite a variety. I think it's gonna, it's, it's a great place. It's got some mysteries, a lot of secrets. Um, so I think it's, I think it's gonna be a blast. Okay. The, the playtesting is a blast. <laughs> it is a good yes. starting point. And uh, yes. so you, you talked about uh, mixing two different uh, kind of games, uh, 5e and the storytelling. Uh, this is an interesting point because they are uh, different, very different kind of games. Uh, was it difficult to merge them together and uh, creating something that could work for both kind of players? Or uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm uh so I I'm the team lead uh of Badlander and uh myself Mark and one other person developed most of the mechanics. Alicia helped a little bit and uh Charlie gave lots and lots of lots of great input and uh <laughs> but it was a balancing act for sure. Um incorporating dots into a 5e type system. We've kind of replaced the proficiency bonus that you see in the D&D 5e mm -hmm. with the more specialization of the dots that are uh, kind of signature of the World of Darkness games. So uh, it was a lot of balancing and I think me and Mark spent uh, probably hundreds of hours <laughs> balancing all of the different mechanics and everything. Um, and we really wanted to, to incorporate some different ways in which Every combat doesn't have to end in um, everyone murdering <laughs> the <and> bad guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of different uh, kind of mechanisms for that. And then a lot more like character. Um, I would say you can individualize your character more, you know, than you would be able to in D&D &D 5e. I mean, yes, you can take a feat and make your character a little special or multi-class, but... Uh, you don't have to do the multi-classing in this this uh, system to get a really unique character, which I really love. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. Moreover, uh, you talk about uh, some original mechanics. Uh, I heard about the uh, crux die, crux dice, mm -hmm. and the drama stones. Uh, could you mm -hmm. please uh, explain us something more about them? Sure. So um, the crux dice are that's basically our mechanism to end combat a little bit sooner and in ways that aren't um, necessarily blood and death, as Alicia said. Um, you know, you earn crux dice in certain ways. So if you roll a critical hit on somebody, um, you get a crux. And once you get up to six crux, 
you get to make a roll and to end the combat and then they might surrender instead of continuing to fight you. Um, or it might end in some other way, you know. Um, it, really, you know, the uh, sky's the limit. Uh, there's a lot more flexibility, I would say, with it. You can use the crux dice or not. Um, and then drama stones are kind of like, um, you get drama stones every scene and uh, they help you level up, but you can also use them to do cool things. You know, um, if you use a drama stone, you can ask the uh, tail spinner, which is what we call our uh, game masters. The You can ask them if you can do something cool or have advantage or what we call a boon on a roll. Um, or you can re-roll something. So you kind of have a little bit of control over like how fast you can level with the drama stones. And then, um, you know, you can yeah. also use them for cool things. Uh, I like it so much the way you managed to put some role play in the, in the combat too. Uh, I think that my favorite mechanics is the one that let you uh, stop the combat without uh, killing everyone. You, you can look at an opponent and if your uh, combat has been uh, uh, so, so so good, you can just let them flee or find other so solutions. And that's amazing. And um, by the way, combat is not only sword and pistol. It's also about uh, magic. Or uh, in this case, uh, I, should, I should say tapestry, I think. Uh, I yes, also... yes. The, the word I've actually banned the word magic from everyone's uh, yeah. mouth. You can't. The the word magic is considered uh, uncouth and childish uh, in Lost Learn, so so we we don't use it. We say uncanny or arcane. Uh, tapestry is the the name of the the vast world, the unseen world of the uncanny. Yeah, and uh, I uh, also like a lot that you uh, you added a seventh um, ability to each character. And uh, a curiosity, you you link this number seven to the seventh uh, ability to the um, seven virtue that are uh, each of them linked to a, an ability and to the seven threads of this tapestry. Is seven so important? And the seven moons. Yeah, th th that's on. And the seven guilds and the seven birthrights. <laughs> birthrights. <laughs> we, we have a problem with number seven. <laughs> I <guess I'm> not... <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, obviously later on we're going to have more birthrights and uh, more <laughs> guilds. But um, so that was a bit silly. But uh, um, I do have a, a – it all started as I have a thing for seven and that um, if uh, – you have close number of friends, number of studies have shown. Seven is the most number of people you can be very intimately involved with. Just like 50 is the maximum people you can have in a community that you can easily, you know, negotiate with socially day to day. So seven is like the biggest number you can get of something before you kind of lose track of the difference between each person and the seven, right? But seven is like the max number of a big group. And so I've always been, uh, I've always used seven, like there were seven original clans in Vampire, and I've always sort of known this, and, and seven has always been an important number in my mind. Even if I'm not, even though I'm not sure my understanding of the research is right, in my own mind, it's very clear seven is like the biggest number that I at least can deal with, uh, you know, and, and, and understand intimately. So that's kind of why I use seven in this, in this setting. And the world of darkness, the the magic number was three. Oh, I said magic. Crap. Um, you owe us ten dollars. Oh no, the not jar. a tip jar again. Um, <laughs> but um, seven is just like yeah, seven is the uncanny number in Lost Learn. Yeah, and th thank you for explaining thank because for explaining it is so uh, original, and. Um, the seven, I think, is also a kind of symbolism. Uh, it has a, well, I can't say magic, but a special meaning. Um, so I also noticed that other uh, famous terms that uh, most uh, RPG use change it here. For example, we don't have ancestries, but we have birthrights. Uh, we don't have classes, but we have guilds. Uh, what can you tell me uh, about it? Is uh, is it uh, to uh, change how people view these uh, uh, features? 
Yeah, the, the idea was to like like to start like first of all, like we're at the same place today that we were when World of Darkness when Vampire first came out, right? Ninety five percent of the people in gaming all play D and D now, right? It's become this huge huge thing. And, and lots of people who new people have come in have never played anything else. They don't know anything else. This is their starting place. And and the idea is that sort of Pathfinder took D and D and went more crunchy. And the idea here is to do what I did with with World of Darkness is to take role playing and go more storytelling. So it's to take all the ideas in D and D and rationalize them in a way that makes a coherent world and a setting that is actually a real world but still has the flavor of D&D enough that people who only have played that system can find very familiar and it's not hard and you can easily convince them to play this game, right? Because that's the key thing that for role players around the world is how do you get that one friend who refuses to play the game that you want to play, how do you convince them to play your game? Right? And, and that all it takes is one person or group to go, no, no, I don't want to, let's just keep playing this. And then you're you're done. You can't play the game you want to play. So the easiest way to get around that is to is to give them what they want just enough, and then give what I consider my people. You know, the the, the people who love storytelling and and flavor and uh, realism and 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 a, a key sense of of reality and and and, uh, and, and having that with the with the D and D. And uh, I think we sort of, it's it, it really, you know, we're D&D &D with dots, you know? So we're bringing in the D&D the &D people and the World of Darkness people, um, you know, both of them will find a lot of things that are very, very familiar. And I, I hope that it, that everyone feels at home. Like, like honestly, like, like, you know, you want, with a game design, you want to provoke people and challenge them and have them do new things. But honestly, if you can make someone feel at home, that that is... That's a sweet spot. We could say that it could be a new starting point for new players also, because nowadays, uh, uh, as you said, most uh, players uh, probably wouldn't be uh, courageous enough to start with another RPG, another completely different RPG. And this could be also a good way to introduce new players to your, your kind of storytelling, I think. And uh, Yeah. Eight-way RPG. Yeah. <laughs> people are not as daring as they were in the 90s i think in the 90s people were looking actively for something brand new and today i think people are looking for something a little new okay you know yeah. it's just a different era that's all this is an interesting point um about it uh, what would you suggest to uh, someone who wants to start writing an rpg right now because you uh, you saw uh, such an evolution in the years so how uh, should a, a people change its approach to write an rpg right now um well always do something new um but not too new um uh, you know like like people either make the mistake of going not changing enough and so therefore no one's interested because it's nothing new or they change everything so much that it no one's interested because they can't figure out what it is you know and, and and so so either one can work if you get it exactly right but there's a sweet spot and it's very very tricky um but I would say this is that we're always looking for people to join us. And uh, if people leave and go on to do their own things, we're more than happy. Like <laughs> we see ourselves as a training place to help people create their own things. And, and English uh, as a first, as a second language is more than okay. Um, you know, we, we want radical diversity. So yeah, if you want to learn how to write a role playing game, join us and actually learn. Um, you know, that's the best way. Uh, you know, uh, my mentor was Greg Stafford and without him, uh, I never would have. And, 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 and Sandy was a huge help. And I, uh, I just had so many great people help me early on. And all I did is go up to them at conventions and say, can I pick your brain? I would love to take you to lunch. And they said, yes. And, you know, here I was a 16 year old kid just starting out in the industry. And I was able to pick the brains of my favorite people in the whole world. And it was it was incredible. And, um, you know, I think that's really cool. 
Yeah, learning from who already knows uh, so well the, the this kind of work is amazing because you you already know uh, what you shouldn't do and uh, probably you you improve your way of writing RPGs far uh, faster. So I hope you will find so many people that uh, will join your team because you are amazing and you would deserve it. And uh, Thank you. by the way. Uh, we talked about uh, the differences uh, between uh, the, the classic 5th edition and uh, uh, your world. Uh, I, I have a doubt about it. Uh, the classic 5th edition is about uh, linearity. Uh, I mean that uh, usually the adventurers have a starting point, they have to follow a, a route, a journey that uh, mostly is uh, very linear and arrive to a goal. Instead, your games has always been very, very different. They are based on a, um, a community, a, an enclosed group, where characters and NPC could uh, uh, have a relationship, could uh, know each other, could uh, um, develop a, a, a deep uh, experience. Uh, did, yeah. you, did you find a solution to uh, merge these two worlds? A hundred percent. I don't know if you got the, the, I don't know if it's done yet, but uh, our second book, we have two books coming out for Badlander. And the second book has a whole chapter on creating your fury, which is a character sheet that, that the Tailspinner, the Game Master, runs, which, which basically describes all the stats for your, your, your team of Badlanders, who basically are, are called, are called a fury uh, of thorns. A thorn is a Badlander. And so you're a fury. And so, this is like basically how you, your downtime can affect how this character sheet looks. It affects your contacts, the people you know, and so on and so on. And then our, in our mm -hmm. second game, which is uh, Fang Knight, we're going to do the same thing I did in uh, Ars Magica, where your, your Fang sheet is your uh, fire hold sheet. So it's basically your, your, your castle that the vampires all live in together that you maintain and, and, and keep together. And, and so, so yeah, it's not like you're these rootless adventurers with no place or, or meaning in the world. In, in every single way, I think we found ways to connect the characters of the world to each other and to their job. And their job is you're a ba you're Badlander. You literally are, are harnessed to the crown. And, and just today, well, for me, this today, uh, for them yesterday, we, we role played that. <laughs> A whole game where they, they were playing these Badlanders who were getting a little in trouble, and Charlie uh, uh, pulled a gun and shot the, the 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 leader, and 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 so she's endangering in a way. I mean, she cut through the the crap definitely, which I found quite satisfying. But um, endangering their whole role because they're they they serve the crown, and this woman is a highborn, and she's a pureborn, and she's very important, and, and so you know. Um, so, so, so suddenly, you know, it, it creates this context where, oh, now they're going to have to spend the next episode covering up <laughs> what happened, probably by making a big boom, right, <laughs> to, to somehow cover up this whole embarrassing episode. Uh, and, and, and so I think that creates a sense of realism because that's exactly what, you know, if you ever talk to someone who's ever served in the military, that's half of what they do, right? They cover up the shit they did wrong. Clean up the messes. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it was great. It was a great use of drama stones. I have to say, uh, mm -hmm. because the drama stone made that made that that move possible. So, um, <laughs> and now it's completely changed our trajectory of what we were doing in this area, which I welcome because I like chaos. But <laughs> so do I. That's kind of why I played as Avanti, so I could have access to all the firearms. <laughs> Big booms. <laughs> yes, all the big booms. <laughs> yes. This is our Lost Lorne uh, Chronicles podcast, which uh, anyone can listen to, your neighborhood uh, Lost Lorne. And also, Charlie's running uh, something on Twitter. So if you like prefer video. Um, Twitch, yeah. So we have <laughs> Twitch, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's sorry, it's sorry. It's oh okay. God, I'm, all right. I'm giving away my yeah, age I mean... here. Holy crap. <laughs> you know, every, all the platforms start with T's now, but yes, in... Hopefully a few weeks, as long as everything goes well, we're going to be debuting a new actual play stream on Twitch where we run a Badlander campaign. It is called Tales from the Forgotten Troop 
I am going to be the tail spinner, and there's probably going to be a lot of chaos in that one, too. <laughs> so anyone who might be interested in checking out the game or just needs something else to watch uh, can check it out and follow us. Um, we'll be releasing details as we get uh, closer to our launch date. And the podcast is Lost Learn Chronicles. Uh, I will surely give it to Luke because it sounds really, really, really cool. Uh, by the way, uh, some minutes ago, you, you talked about your next uh, publications. And uh, uh, someone in the chat is asking, uh, will you make a bestiary for Badlanders too? Oh, yes. There's a bestiary. Uh, oh, the the so second book is, is, is half bestiary, I want to say, I think. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is. It's half, half of it is about bestiary and relica, um, which is like our magic items. Oops, I said the magic word. <laughs> Put it on my tab, Mark. Um, <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, so the bestiary is very exciting. The really cool thing about it is we're going to have an expanded bestiary in PDF form for people who follow our pre-launch on the Kickstarter now. You will receive it for free. That's um, amazing. If you back, yeah, yep. So, yeah, we'll have 20 additional um, creatures in there, but we've got at least 50 in the bestiary, and they are terrifying. I'm uh, watching the artists create these things, and I'm like, oh, good. That's going to be with me for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good point. That's a good point because uh, I love uh, the the art of your works. I mean, I also love the, the art of, uh, for example, Vampire and World of Darkness. And in my opinion, the, they have one uh, point in common. The art is uh, is very vague. Is very um, not precise in the trait. Uh, and. I think that mostly it is because the part of the, the narration is left to the to the master. Um, is this the idea also behind uh, Lost Learn and Bedlander? For uh, talking about art, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, you know, it's it's we're basically a, you know like a a creative commune in the right sense of the word, not the wrong, and. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of our artists have sort of, you know, uh, 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 it's Italian sense of the word. It's an, it's an old Italian word, right? Um, uh, uh, and so, so the idea is, is that we're sort of working together as a team okay. to to build up skills, and and people uh, a lot of people are um, so, a lot of them start out less talented, but over time become very talented. So, so that's sort of our. A lot of our artists uh, have really developed, which I find incredibly thrilling. Like to watch anyone, a writer, artist, any position, just sort of blossom. Uh, that's that's the that's the stuff of life. Watching that, you know, um, not, nothing. I don't know. There's nothing better. And so, yeah, very very happy what we got. Uh, th that's amazing. So you are the kind of author that uh, uh, leaves a, a lot of freedom to the artists. Just uh, uh, I mean, you got to leave. You got to leave a lot of freedom to everyone. Obviously, there's certain frameworks and structures to go with, um, but within that, you have to give people uh, as much freedom as you can, which is which is very very difficult, right? Like to give people freedom, and then you want, desperately want to do everything yourself. But I've seen too many creators and want to do everything themselves, you know, uh, and and and. Only some people get away with that. Even James Cameron went nuts and he couldn't do it all, right? In the end, he couldn't do it all. Uh, and you have to just sort of give it up a little bit and, and you gotta you know, be collaborative and you gotta work with people and, and trust them. And, and, uh, and um, sometimes it's not gonna work out, but, but amazingly, you get so much more out of it because people have ideas you'll never have. And, and you have this joy of going, oh, wow, that's a great idea. And, and and that's an, a powerful. I love having that moment. Like someone else does something in a world that, you, that with an idea that you maybe had part of, and then they add something to it. I mean, that's 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 what gaming is all about, right? That's what role playing is all about. So so why should role playing games be organized the same way that our games are collaborative? And that's sort of the idea behind um, Lost Learn Games. 
I agree so much with you because with uh, freedoms also comes uh, uh, the possibility to show uh, one's talent. So that's uh, that's a very very good approach. And I think that also a, a, a colorist, a friend of us in the chat, is appreciating it. And um, we talked about uh, freedom. Um, but I think that in your project also other um, good, uh, good feelings, good ideas are, are present. For example, uh, you talk a lot about uh, inclusiveness. Uh, is it also a, a team that you want uh, to, um, to include in uh, Badlander and uh, Lost Lore? Uh, to have inclusiveness? Like... Yeah. Um... In the world or in the people creating in the world? In, in the game world. In... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, like, like for instance, one, one idea uh, we, we, we want to have this is a world that people come here from Earth, Earth, basically, right? And so um, we have many different cultures represented, and but we're only doing a small part of, you know, one third, basically. Of, of Lost Lorne, and so we have other parts of it coming. And But even in this part, there's many different cultures that from Earth that came over in this last wave of invasions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so the humans who come over are all from these different cultures on Earth, and so we're representing all these different cultures, and we want them all to be there. And we're actively seeking people from those cultures. You know, like I've spent most of my life living and all over the place, and, and so for me, it's like this is, you know, I feel my home is all these different places that that I, I love these people. I love I love this crazy world we live in. I think most people have not had enough experience with that. So our, our hope is that as we grow, that with these other parts of Lost Learn, we can bring in the parts of the world where actually the people from there um, can write those parts of it, and and we can have that diversity. But but yeah, I mean, it's it's all about the diversity uh, in the world and. Um, and also, we, we don't want to shy away from, you know, bad parts of human being a human, right? Like the racism, for instance. Like, but no one wants to deal with real life racism. We're playing a game. So what we've done is that you have the pureborn, the humans of all different races, right? Different colors and hues. They're pureborn, and then the people who've been on Lost Learn for a while are the metalborn. And there's kind of a problem between them. They're racist against each other. And so that way we can, we can represent some of this screwed up aspect of what it is to be human without forcing people to deal with, you know, some of the issues in their own lives. Uh, diversity is uh, is definitely a, a gift, and in my opinion, uh, what I always loved about your storytelling is that uh, um, the main characters are almost never the lawful good paladin. Uh, they, they are <laughs> most time yeah. nature positive. Uh, most time, the the main characters can be uh, I wouldn't say evil, but could have. Uh, uh, evil aspects at least equally flawed sorry morally ambiguous <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's a very cool thing because uh, you managed to put together the this love for diversity and uh, the um, the possibility to roll uh, characters who are uh, deep and uh, uh, should be discovered from the player too and, uh, yeah, I mean, the whole, the whole idea of role playing, it's an art form about focus on the character, right? Like the movie is focused on the images and the, the music and the emotionality, right, of a story. Novels are focused on the, the inner life and the plot of a story. But role playing as a type of storytelling is focused on the experience of being a character, of experiencing someone else's inner life, of being someone. And so, so I've always felt like if you want to do role playing, if you want to do role playing justice, you have to give people a really powerful experience, right? What what you want in a role playing game is you want to play someone who's goddamn interesting. And, and and so I've always thought too many games just give people boring characters, and mm -hmm. and I, 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 that's definitely not something I will ever do in a game. 
is, is, is give people boring characters. That would, that would be the death of me. Well, one thing that we do differently than, than D&D 5e as well that I love, I love, love, love it, is we have passions, right? And so instead of having an alignment where you're just lawful good, what does that mean? That's like a strict alignment or like chaotic neutral. What do you, you just do what you want? Like, you know, uh, that's not the reality of life. In life, we're constantly changing and evolving. So our passions, we have seven uh, good passions and seven um, negative passions. And people like decide what their character kind of is in each of those passions and what which are their strongest passions and what are their kind of flaws, character flaws, and they evolve with the character. So every time you take a rank, you can make a change based on what's happened in the story or whatever, or how your character's grown. Um, and I just really think that's that's cool because I, I don't think it's always as simple as I'm chaotic neutral. No, I'm reckless and I'm, I'm uh, oathless and I'm, <laughs> but I'm also loving, you know, like, there's there's more to it than just yeah. you know and you can simple evolve. yeah yep or devolve in, in, devolve in, 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 or yeah. devolve <laughs> yeah. just because of each I mean even worse as the game goes on yeah <laughs> I mean I mean the, the, the game you're going to devolve <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the D and D system is actually genius right it's really good system in the abstract and and, and sort of describing the classic fantasy paradigm and, and how things work in terms of good versus evil, law versus chaos is really effective. It's, it's cool. Great. But in practice, it tends to lock people into a certain way. It creates fights. And uh, as people say in Nordic LARP, it creates a, an alibi like, oh, I'm chaotic evil. I had to do it. Like, I had no choice. <laughs> And it's a bad alibi, right? It's a bad alibi you don't want people to have. Yeah. Right? It just lets them get away with crap. And and so it's very, very destructive in terms of gaming groups and and role playing. And honestly, they should get rid of it because of that. Even even though it's a beautiful, very clever and powerful system to describe a world that's bad for characters. People aren't that simple. We're multifaceted, right? In real life. Yeah. It's not but always no simple. No it might be lawful simple. good in one situation, but there's going to be another situation where I might be looking like I'm pretty chaotic neutral. So mm -hmm. it just kind of depends. And it, I mean, it works in D&D, &D too, because it's like, it's, you know, when you go back to the old hack and slash games and like, you're going to like explore a dungeon and kill monsters. And that's that's great. But like when you want to do again more with like the storytelling, the role, the role playing, and you want to do a little more heavy with intrigue, you need a more complicated system than the standard alignment system. So, yeah, like when you want to yeah. shoot a, a low royal lady in the middle of negotiation, right, Charlie? If you're reckless, <laughs> that yeah. negotiation was going nowhere. We have a very I just reckless had a process. Party. <laughs> yeah. We're all a little reckless, and that's what happens. So we're going to have to do a lot of covering up, I think. <laughs> that's what happens. What, what, what I like the most of the passions is the is the crux pair. That's really when I went. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah we're going to keep the system. And the crux pair is your your pair of virtue, your vile and your virtue. That that you're basically high on both of them, and you flip flop. So you're both honorable and dishonorable type type idea you know and so so it goes back and forth uh and so i think that kind of captures how a lot some people are is that you know some things yes i'm always always you know honorable but there's other things where no i'm very 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 honorable i'm also very very hopeless and, and, and you know we all know people like that right um, they're, very, they're either very, very, very brave and can be counted at all times, or they're very, very scared and can't be counted on at all. And, and that's kind of the human condition. But that's only one of your seven, right? So you have seven pairs, and only one is your crux pair. And that can switch, but, but, but at least at first, that identifies who you are. Yeah. And about that, uh, there is an interesting uh, question from the chat. Uh, do you have a favorite float portrait in your characters to either evolve from or spiral further into? 
a favorite uh, uh, a fa- uh favorite right. flow oh that's that's you jenna i mean not saying you're flawed but your characters <laughs> are you're saying my characters are flawed <laughs> Well, um, you know, that's your favorite thing <laughs> in the world, right? Right. I do. I do love character flaws. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so my favorite character flaw uh, so far has been um, what my character for the first season of Lost Arm Chronicles. I played a Duskwatch, which is kind of a rogue type. Um, and she had like a very traumatic upbringing and... Um, she was very reactive, so she would fight anybody, and she actually ended up almost killing a child. <laughs> Challenged her to a duel. <laughs> so that okay. was a potentially really bad yes. moment. <laughs> totally agree. I did have. <laughs> but she, I mean, she would fight anybody. She just got out of the training for boot camp, and uh, she was like, "You want to see if I can fight?" Come at me, bra. <laughs> and kid was fighting some master, but uh, and I rolled well, so I won. But uh, which was awesome. But <laughs> but yeah, she was kind of like uh, just very reactive and had that like kind of prickly like shell. But she was also like had a real soft spot for people who had suffered or like the people who she viewed as like the underdogs. So <laughs> it was a weird dichotomy to play. But that was that was my favorite. Uh, character flaw, but <laughs> basically I'll fight anybody. Um... My, my thing that I like uh, the, in terms of flaws, and I, I keep, I, I'm sorry to keep doing the hard sell on everyone. I apologize for this, <laughs> but you know, uh, uh, as Kickstarters get closer, you find yourself doing the hard sell more and more. So I, I apologize everyone, but, but, but do remember, uh, 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 you know, Kickstarters are how we live and breathe in this world nowadays. It's not like we have, uh, you know, a, a sales chain of distributors anymore. You know, it's all in one month. Anyway, um, uh, we have a blight system, which is basically our uh, insanity system. But instead of you losing your sanity, you gain blight. And I am, I, I don't know if everyone will be as into it as I am, but. I'm so proud of this game system. I, I think it's the, one of the more clever systems I've invented, and I think it really captures the combination of the physical blight you can get, the deformities and injuries and all that, and as well as the mental. And it combines them in this, this very cool way that I think will definitely give people the sense of a character that's being weighted down by their experiences and their age and their and this their hard life. And, and so I'm, uh, oh yeah, um, Everyone remind me that we need to have some more blight in the game. I keep forgetting. I, well, yeah, what's I'm looking forward on? to it. I don't, I don't want to blighted. remind you of that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, actually, it's funny because I worked with Mark to design the blight system. And I'm actually, in my day job, I'm a mental health provider. Uh, uh, I'm trained in clinical social work, so psychology and all that. So it's a very realistic um, <laughs> Insanity okay. system. <laughs> and uh, so, the, this is your job. So, uh, a question. Uh, do you think that uh, this kind of game, a, a game more um, focused on uh, storytelling, on uh, not only combat or something more classic like uh, D&D 5th edition, uh, could help someone with uh, uh, himself or herself? I... You know, so I, I've done a little bit of training in like how we can use uh, role playing games as therapeutic tools, and um, I would say, you know, so the parts of D and D that that don't really seem as helpful are like our combat because you're just doing combat, but like in this system, there's a lot more uh, stress on like relationships and the storytelling and. Um, it gives, I think, a lot more opportunity for people to develop social skills or to, like, kind of practice how they would, um, you know, approach a, a situation that might be anxiety-provoking if something similar were to happen in in real life. Like, uh, you know, having to do a speech in front of a crowd or... Um, and it kind of pr- provides a safe space for that, that kind of um, practicing 
you know, skills that maybe they're not as confident in being able to practice or uh, having conversations that they might not feel as comfortable doing if they were, you know, doing it as themselves. When you're playing a role, you kind of get that opportunity to uh, try something out and it's kind of safe because, you know, you're behind the mask of your character. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. And um, I'm curious about one thing. Uh, Mark explained a lot of um, many aspects of this game, but uh, all the all the rest of the team. What uh, which part do you um, appreciate more? Is there any particular aspect that uh, you are eager to play or you are proud of uh, about uh, Badlander and Lost Door? Hmm. Uh, I'm Alicia. Got this. Um, I mean, <laughs> okay, well, I mean, I, I just think the overall way it all comes together, I, it, it's hard to pick kind of like a favorite part. Um, I just, cause I feel like on a whole, I, it's just, there's so much to it that you get like a balance. Like I'm the kind of person who's always like, okay, I want to fight a little bit, but I also want to do some, like a, a stretch of role play and, um, and then I want to kind of focus on my character's background and have like this going on and kind of know a little more about the guild. And so I feel like it covers so many different angles that you can like switch things up. And I think so probably my favorite aspect is is this, the flexibility of being able to have a game be whatever you want it to be. Um, that's and, and have whatever, like know your group, right? If you have a kind yeah. of group that it's going to get antsy and and get impatient and you need to throw a battle at them, you can do that, you know, it's it's pretty easy. And then if you have the kind of group who's, you know, if they're, they're getting worn out from that and you want to take them into the city and just have all this stuff going on where, you know, they can interact or, or you know, follow up a mystery or, you know, you can do anything with the game. And um, and in another aspect I really like, actually, um, some of the traditions, I think, are very unique in this game. Some of the world traditions and cultural things like uh, masks. <laughs> I really like the concept, like masquerade. There is going to be like, um, there's going to be this theater. There's going to be just all kinds of really cool and fun traditions in the game um, okay. that, that people will, will find out about. So it's mostly about flexibility and balance, let's say. Yeah, just oh. options, a yeah. lot of options. And, and I love that. It doesn't kind of corral you into a certain way of playing. Um, and so that way anybody, any any group can play it and focus on what they want to focus on. You know, if you want something more fun and lighthearted, you can do that. If you want something a little darker and more horror and more of a struggle, you can do that. If you want something that's like, battle and exploring you can do that you know um like the st standard dungeon crawls you can do that you can do you know intrigue and social and politics you can do that so it is really a little something for everyone so it's sort kind of, of like a one size fits all we all have <laughs> friends who have different things yeah. that they want right. to do circling right? back yes. and, and really yes. we're all one of we all just want to hang out with our friends right yeah. mm -hmm. Like, like our new and old friends, what we really want to do is we want to hang out with them and spend time with them. And role playing is a wonderful way for nerds to interact with each other in a way that doesn't make us uncomfortable. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's just a beautiful thing. And, and um, like, it's so beautiful. Like, I've, you know, from the very first time I ever role played, it was with my dad. And I was interacting with my dad in a way I had never interacted before. And it was just me and him and the his intern for the for the church my dad was a pastor um a priest and and it was just this beautiful thing that here i was with these two adults and i was interacting with them as an equal and you know and it was just natural and it was just a it was just a nice way and previous sundays when he'd come over for sunday dinner after church we had played chess or done things it was very rigid and formal as you might imagine, you know, a pastor's house would be somewhat formal. And um, and suddenly it was just loose and happy and wonderful. And and what you want to do with a gaming group is you want to make every person in that room with you as comfortable as possible. Whether they're a, a gamer type, a storyteller type, uh, an actor type, 
um, uh, a puzzle solver type, you know, or a storyteller. They just want to experience a wonderful story. You want to make every type of player happy in, 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 your, in your group. And, and that's kind of how we design um, this game and all the other games that will be coming out, it, it is that beautiful blend of realistic world and setting that, you know, that, that feels real combined with the kind of experiences that everyone, all your different friends can enjoy. And that's the magic of, of uh, RPGs. Oops, I, I used the forbidden word, sorry. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and jar. <laughs> please, please forgive me. <laughs> and, uh, you talked about uh, so, so many things. Uh, you uh, showed how RPGs could lead to uh, other kind of hobbies, such as, uh, um, I don't know, movies or uh, anything else. Anything else. Is there anything that uh, uh, was an inspiration for this war for Badlander and Lost Lore? Uh, maybe another RPG, maybe movies or TV series or whatever? Or is just everything uh, about your, uh, your imagination and uh, your previous experiences? Well, I mean, I've always loved The Three Musketeers, I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> You know, like for me, reading The Three Musketeers was like the seminal moment of my life. And then watching the, the famous uh, movies that came out in the 70s, uh, The Three Musketeers and The Four Musketeers, um, this is like the greatest, you know, I love these movies so much. And uh, so obviously those are huge. So any, any movie that has swords and, um, and, and pistols, I love it. Like I just love that combination of... of uh, I love the swashbuckling, and I, I think it's a great genre. And so, um, and also, uh, I love Shakespeare. And so, like an early uh, Jenna probably remembers very vividly the day I went. This has to be about Shakespeare, and everyone's like, "What?" <laughs> and, and I was like, and, I, and it just was. I had just watched, well, re rewatched for like the fifth time Shakespeare in Love, which I, I am not ashamed of saying that I love that movie so much. I love that movie. Love it, love it, love it. And um, even though it's Hollywood schlock, Ho Harvey Weinstein produced it, I don't care. I love that movie. Um, but anyway, um, you know, as a person who grew up you know, performing in Shakespeare and reading Shakespeare and loving Shakespeare, um, there's just a certain attitude about that. So basically, Lost Lorne is is a, a fantasy setting set in the time of Shakespeare mm -hmm. is, is the simplest way I find to explain it as a setting. And uh, it definitely thus has a sort of English point of view, Alvion, uh, which is our main empire, and uh, um, Valazar, which is our main city, I have a very sort of little bit of a London feel. And, and that's kind of where, where we you know, it kind of, and, 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 and they even have their own bard of Albion. <laughs> you said bard weren't like allowed. Porn. Well, the bard is allowed, right? Shakespeare is the bard. So, so anyway, the bard, of Albion, bards, fine. bard of Albion might actually be Shakespeare, who's come over to, as a experiment <laughs> to, so, uh, that's yet to be determined, but, uh, you know, um, there's that. Okay, it's clear that you are so full of uh, creativity and sources of inspiration. So uh, um, I have something to ask to the other members of this team, uh, Jenna, uh, Alicia and Charlie. Um, some minutes before uh, I go, uh, Mark talked about uh, his, uh, his intention to expand uh, this team, but uh, how is it uh, to work with him? Charlie, well. choose your words carefully. <laughs> well, considering I'm one of two primary editors, I have to choose everyone's words carefully. <laughs> nice one. Including Mark's words. <laughs> yes. In fact, Charlie chooses my words carefully. <laughs> you and you give you give me lots of words to choose from. <laughs> And they want to delete them all. <laughs> I'm just oh, kidding. Uh, <laughs> <most of them. laughs> 
but it's uh, uh, it's been a a great experience so far getting to be a part of this company um it's sort of my breakthrough into the game dev area of society um and i've gotten to interact with a lot of great people during my time here and there's just a constant influx of new ideas and creativity uh, in many of our company chat rooms there's every day i get to wake up and see something new and i'm just like okay how's this going to be worked into the next book or the next one and the product line just continually expands and it's mark awesome. is wonder mark is <laughs> Mark is. Choose more words, no. Don't put words in your mouth, but Mark is. Uh, a pain in my butt? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love working with Mark. Um, I feel like Lost Learn is almost like. We almost have a family community feel within itself. So it makes sense that we built this game that is, where relationships are so important because they become so important in the company itself. You know, um, we have teams within teams, but we all try to interact with each other too, uh, you know, and- uh, It is Mark, pretty astute that Jenna, that we are creating games that are about relationships. It is. Well, yeah, I'm a therapist. So I'm not a pick up on those things. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't have a relationship focus, you don't have an adventuring party. <laughs> exactly, right? So. Like, or, or you're just there killing monsters and like, why would I hang out with you? I don't care about you. You know, like that's, that's, I've had those okay. moments in DD where I'm like, I don't know this person. I don't care that they're dead. Like, do to do to do. Just do that video game. <laughs> you can just yeah. do that in video games. Right. But like, it's no, yeah, exactly. So um, I really love, um, Mark will also like encourage us to push like where we want to grow. Um, I think that he has, um, he really enjoys like mentoring people um, and teaching us about things. Um, he also sometimes pe tests my patience, <laughs> but uh, he's a very it's part wonderful of mentoring. <laughs> thinks, I think about all of the editing meetings Mark has not been at. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, they, Mark are, they are at five in the morning my time, right? <laughs> That's, I have to get up for work at that time. <laughs> that all sounds horrible, and I don't do that. Um, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I don't mind waking up at 5 in the morning. I do mind going to a meeting at 5 in the morning. Yeah, I don't talk to people before 10. Um. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure anyone should be introduced to me after, you know, until before, 11 a.m. Like 10, 10 a.m., yeah, 11 a.m., yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, he's a Krabby Patty in the morning. <laughs> but no, he has these wonderfully amazing ideas. Um, and sometimes things get a little chaotic, but there's a lot of like love and respect and empathy on our team that I really like. You, I just don't see it in a lot of other like types of workplaces and like teams. So I just really appreciate that about Lost Lauren. And me kind of do what, what I want. If I want, I like decided I want to try out art. He's like, well, do some art for our team. And I did some art for our team. And he's like, oh, well, I want to try this out. And he's like, yeah, sure, go do that. Like, you know, so he kind of lets you kind of get the experiences that you want. And I really appreciate that about him. Thank you. You know, <laughs> and uh, I think the bottom line here is that I'm completely wonderful in every way. <laughs> also, pain in the also butt, but whatever. <laughs> Use too many ellipses. Uh, I, I will stick with the <laughs> wonderful part. No, I mean, uh, um, I, I, I honestly, uh, I'm just trying to, you know, like I'm an older person who's been in the industry a, a long time, and and one thing I always thought about um, my mentors is maybe they never thought about is like how to make it better for everyone else coming up and, and and so part of what i'm trying to do here is is is, is you know i like i feel if i succeed if in um if in 30 years uh, the field of storytelling 
not just role playing, but storytelling as a bunch of people who've come through our world and, and, and have come out and, and done amazing things. And that would, what a amazing, that would be the, the biggest achievement of my life of all of our lives to be, to have been part of that journey that, that some people have broken out and done amazing things. Right. I mean, uh, wow. Like I, just to have been there as someone shot by like a comet would be great. And that's amazing. And uh, thank you for your uh, opinion uh, about this uh, this matter and about Mark uh, also. And um, the, the, the chat is asking one thing, and I also have a doubt about it because everyone told this opinion apart from Alicia. Her her face was half uh, saying nodding, saying yes, <laughs> and half uh, asking, uh, "Please don't ask me anything about this." <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so no, like... <laughs> feel free to, to say your opinion if you want. Uh, yeah, no, I mean it, it's all true what they say, okay. <laughs> but. Um... <laughs> no, but um, I, I mean, for, for me, I played vampire for so long since the first edition. Like, I've, I've been a huge fan of the World of Darkness, and and Alicia so is older than she looks. She looks like she's twenty. She's a vampire. She's not, <laughs> she's not twenty. I'm, I'm like grandmother Oak. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's ageless. But, she sold her soul to somebody, you know. So what happens when you play vampire for that many years, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I was so excited and I just joined the team end of January, so I'm pretty new. Um, so, but, but for me, it was just, this was huge for me. I was like, oh, I really want to. So I ended up, um, because Mark lives across the world and he's on an opposite time. So I would stay up later and later. Now I'm naturally a night person, but just to have these sharing of ideas with Mark because he's brilliant and he's always got new ideas and being like, oh, I want to be part of this. So, you know, trying to like have these conversations and, and, and help. And for me, that's, it's just so mentally stimulating. And I just, I love that. But, you know, I'm up three in the morning having conversations and being like, oh, can we do this? But, but he's very open to people's ideas too. And um, just got to put it in a document so he can actually look at it. <laughs> Cause like yeah. all these things, we get lost in the chats and you've got a million chats going on and like ideas get like kind of just lost in the flow. But um, by the way, I have to do a shout out to the LARP people is that Alicia is heading up our, we're doing a new uh, team based on tarot LARP. We're doing a tarot deck, uh, which yeah. is based on the, 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 the tarot of Lost Lorne. and Alicia is running up that team. And so please reach out to us. Uh, we're on Facebook because that's the worldwide telephone system. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, reach out to Alicia and, and Lost Lorne. And, uh, and anyway, uh, if you are interested in LARP, we are interested in you because we want uh, we want to do a whole new kind of LARP that's a little bit board game, a little bit mega game, uh, you know, a little bit Nordic, a little bit not Nordic, and uh, well, Alicia's running the team, so please, uh, we're <laughs> definitely looking for people with ideas on how to do LARP in a different yes. way. Yeah, some input would be great too for like what your favorite things from your favorite LARP, what experiences and stuff, because we're still throwing the ideas together and everything, and uh, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah. Like your last idea, Alicia, was, well, it was, it was really good. Yay. I was jealous. I was jealous. <laughs> what? <laughs> and that's no, well, was, he wants jealous. us to succeed, but also gets jealous. <laughs> you know, I'm human. I'm human. Like, you know, I want all the good ideas for myself. <laughs> and I, I'm actually, I want everyone to know I'm actually joking on that, is that there is that small part of me that is like that for a second, but, but, but honestly, um, anyone who doesn't feel the joy for other people, then go get therapy, please, right, right away. <laughs> and like, the, feel joy for people. The whole feel team feel is genuine great. joy for other people's mm -hmm. amazing creativity and achievements, and it makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Like feel joy for that. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, we got a great team, and everybody's like super encouraging. We're all kind of cheerleaders for each other, uh, but not in the cheesy way, you know. But we're <laughs> 
constantly <laughs> always like you know encouraging each other or oh, saying, I love you I, so much Jenna I love you what are you too. talking about I'm not cheating <laughs> anyway I love you so much Charlie you're wonderful I love you Alicia you're the best I can't even That's do surprising. it I can't even do it how do you do that <laughs> I was going to say, and it looks like I, a circle. I, 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 felt, just I felt very strange. That was, a, that was a whole out of body experience. I never want to have that again. <laughs> <laughs> and too much praise. Too much praise. Uh, yeah. Mark can never just, just give praise. <laughs> just give me, give me your I, newest doc, and I can bring you back down. I am very bad at <laughs> praise, but that does mean that when I do accidentally give praise, it's valuable. Accidentally. It's valuable. <laughs> Luckily, he's got very people like, I, I, I don't all the know time, how to so. I, I have a very hard time with praise. Fair. <laughs> Well, that's amazing because uh, uh, almost all of your games are uh, so linked, so related so, to the um, uh, LARP world. And I think that uh, one, uh, one good reason uh, could be that uh, they are also linked to storytelling and uh, deep role play. So it's very easy to bring them to real, uh, real world in LARPs. And um, one more thing, now uh, we will show uh, a, a video about your work, about uh, Bedlander. But uh, after that, uh, if you want to tell something more about it, or if you want to, uh, I don't know, uh, tell something more about your next books, you are free to do it. Absolutely, we will do that. Okay. Oh, we have a real video <laughs> coming uh, <laughs> with music and stuff. Okay. That was actually good. Who put that? Who, did you do this, Jenna? I did. Yes. Oh, wow, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, at first I, I, Yeah, yeah, we, we just we just need some music. Um, we got lucky with Bat with Bloodstone because we had Sean to the song. Yeah. Um, there was yeah, there was some music uh, in the original video, but I think that um, it's been translated, right? Uh, okay. And this was, <laughs> this was your uh, amazing video. And uh, so, a, a good way to introduce such a, a promising uh, project. And uh, do you have anything else to, to tell us about it? Uh, maybe something that uh, the players should know? Um, um, first of all, like what we're trying to do here in general is, uh, is the world of darkness, but but in a fantasy world, but a fantasy world that is realistic and 3D and, and smart. And so don't think that because we're using the d, &D system, it's going to be like the tongue in cheek, silly, I don't, I don't know if I can say this, um, silly buggers. Is that still acceptable? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I think buggers is probably a bad word. I apologize for people for saying that. <laughs> but I grew Never up in Scotland and, I, and we, we <laughs> said it all the time. And uh, I just realized I can't say it anymore. Uh, anyway, I apologize, everyone. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an old, old man, feeble. I'm so feeble. I, yeah, I it's saying, the dementia kicking in. Everyone just relax. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so, um, um, so we have this, uh, you know, um, anyway, take it away, Jen. I, I lost my turn of thought. Uh, yeah, it, it's like Alicia said, it's, it's very, uh, world of, it's going to have that world of darkness storyteller feel to it with, you know, the 5e system. And it's this perfect, I think for me, meld of the two things, you know? Um, and it's very, it's got a lot of gritty realism, but also, um, just, I mean, the, the sky's the limit. There are endless possibilities and, um, just tons of stories to be told within this world. 
It, it is the, the beginning. world of darkness done <laughs> in a fantasy world that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? and, and, and the thing about the world of darkness is that it was a high or high, let's admit it, fantasy world in the modern world, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 it, and it fit. It made sense. It, it, it had a sensibility. It, 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 it was right for its time. It was right for the people who wanted to play it and, it, and it fit in. And we're trying to do the same thing this time. The next game is Fang Night, and that's our vampire game. So basically, we started with Hunters Hunted, and you, you get to play the Badlanders who hunt monsters. Uh, and then next is Fang Night, and then after that is Bane Night, the werewolf game. So, so the goal is to do in a beautiful Game of Thrones kind of way, you know, <laughs> a series of games that that is. A, and, and the great thing is, is that you know, Vampire will. Let's face it, it's set in a certain time period. It's set in the '90s when it came out, mm -hmm. and and if people don't like the '90s, it will be forgotten. But the great thing about the fantasy the world is the fantasy world can live forever right <laughs> That's true. like fantasy yes. worlds 100 100 years from now who can still play fantasy worlds and it doesn't matter right but 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 worlds are based in a certain time they have a certain power and so so what i'm trying to do now is create a mythos of you are the monster that can last for hundreds of years and uh and uh that's my main goal Right is to make this something that that will, you know, unlike World of Darkness, which probably because the nineties don't appear to be that interested in people. <laughs> no, the nineties well, are well, back, Mark. It's back. Something it's more back, ageless. But it's back, yeah. but, but the the eighties are forever green. <laughs> the nineties forever green? I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> no. I mean, Lost Lord's more ageless, and it's. It's yes. in like time, time yeah. and place, and it's so that's it's gonna be it can be forever. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really hope so. And uh, many players maybe uh, are curious about uh, other uh, manuals about uh, Lost World world. If you want, uh, you can tell us something more about that. And uh, other way, uh, you can also tell us how to follow your uh, your project. Uh, I mean, if you have uh, a a page on Facebook or Instagram or a YouTube channel or whatever, apart from the, the Twitch uh, uh, channel that you mentioned before, the LARP and uh, and the things. A Lost Lorne on, on Facebook is the first place to go. Uh, and then lostlorne.com. And then Jenna, you're the marketing man. Is Jenna there still? Yeah, I'm here. So okay, uh, if you want to follow the Badlander project specifically, uh, go to uh, bit.ly slash capital B L uh, R P G and it will take you to the Kickstarter page. Isn't the website is it lostlordgames.com? Yes. Yeah, lostlordgames.com. Oh, it's lost, oh, sorry. oh man. Lost Lord Games. <laughs> yeah, and then that, at the bottom of the website are links to most of the social media. Yeah, yeah, the website has links to everything that you'll need. Okay. Um, <laughs> and merchandise, really cool merchandise. Yes, <laughs> yep. <laughs> very good, very good, thanks. Uh, so, I think that uh, this could be a good moment to end this uh, interview, but uh, first of all, uh, I want to say thank you uh, to everybody who is here, thank you for uh, thank you for being here and revealing us so many cool things about your work. Uh, thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Alicia, and thank you, Charlie. Thank you Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a blast. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best for your project, and I hope to see you soon. Hope to see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for staying with us. If you've enjoyed yourself, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more content.